haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you can get updates whenever we release a new video if you can also to support the channel check out www.vitorialfamilybooks.com where you can see the books that me and my daughter have written including my book the cabal of saga begins and her series called the invisible Girl series also available at amazon.com all right everyone sit back and enjoy the show and don't forget keep on rocking Today we got a special treat for you. Instead of me talking to, about guitar mods or lessons on a keyboard, we have interviewing a very special guest today. His name is Jeffrey Bryan, and he's from the famous 80s band Survivor. Hopefully this lick kind of reminds you of him because they came out with a famous hit from the Rocky III movie called I Am the Tiger. All right, guys, sit back and enjoy the interview. And don't forget, keep on rocking. All right. Everybody, welcome to the Rockin' with Mark YouTube channel. Today, we got a very special guest. We got Jeffrey Bryant, keyboardist from the famous band from the 80s, Survivor. How you doing today, buddy? I'm doing good. Doing good. How are you? Good, man. Just uh, enjoying the uh, horrible weather here in Jersey. Oh, yeah. You guys are getting a freeze, <laughs> aren't you? The beautiful You're... lockdown of the, the COVID incident that's going on pandemic worldwide yeah you're getting a you're getting a double uh a double uh a double punch there you got the midwest freeze coming over yeah. what do you call that the, the polar vor vortex or something like that yeah yeah exactly and then uh and then of covid which is the never-ending uh disaster yeah. so uh the hits just keep coming yeah yeah <laughs> so Let's get a little bit more information on you. So you're from California. I'm assuming you're still living in California, correct? Yep, yeah, I'm still over here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, born and raised in in Los Angeles. Yes. Yeah. So how did you how did you get into music? Like, well, I've been doing music age or whatever. Yeah, or? yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been playing music my whole life. Uh, I mean, you'd have to go back to like maybe ten years old, eleven years old. Um. I, uh, I actually didn't want to be a piano player or anything like that. I was, I just, I found out I had a voice. I like to sing. And, uh, so I used to put these records on and, uh, you know, you didn't have an internet, so you'd had to write down the lyrics. So yeah. you'd put like that, you'd put the needle on the record, put the right, write a sentence and put the needle off and then put it back on. It took forever to get the lyrics. But once I had those, I would, I would just start singing to him i'd learn the songs and i was like i don't know 11 years old or something wow. and my dad my dad was in the electronics industry he used to rep different uh you know different uh he used to be a salesman basically and so he he uh he would bring home these dubbing decks two cassette decks and yep. that was like you know back in those days that was like you know cutting edge cutting edge yeah and so I would record, I would put a record on and record the record onto one cassette and then sing to the next one. And I would make my own, you know, multi-track <laughs> recording. Uh, and that's how I learned to sing. But that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a singer. And um, that, what's, that's how I kind of got into music. It was just, I just loved music. It was, you know, no one in my family is. The, the keyboard first? Like, what was your first instrument? The keyboard? Singing. Like, I... Yeah, singing. singing. And, then I, and then I moved to guitar. Okay. And uh about 13 years old I was learning guitar and I took a few lessons and and uh you know I I I didn't really I still play guitar, you know, obviously, but I uh it's I don't I don't identify as a guitar player anymore. Uh I found the keyboard about 
a year after that. And I was like, that's it. This is what I got to be doing. Um, so yeah. So keyboards came kind of after I discovered voice and guitar. Okay. I found another, I found another voice with, with piano and, uh, I was learning, um, how to read and write music and, and kind of was taking classes and all kinds of stuff through, through, through junior high and high school and, and beyond. And, and I, uh, I kind of knew a lot about music theory and understood music, even though I didn't approach it like a normal keyboard player from early age. You know, a lot of guys, they'll, they'll learn how to play an instrument and that's when they learn how to read and write music at the same time. I yeah, kind of had it back. Yeah. I kind of had it backwards. Yeah. So I was, I. I, yeah, I, I, oh, it's, I, I see your guitar standing there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I, uh, you know, I kind of had a, a, a good handle on the music language and, and I just applied it to any instrument I picked up. Yeah. And, and when and, you use the keyboard, do you use all the, like the special effects, like the drums, the drum beats and all that, or you just, just play straight the keyboards? Well, no, I'm a keyboard player. So, I mean, generally, depending on the, the, the job, the gig, the band, you know, I, I play multiple at a time, you know, so I'm doing, I'm doing whatever's necessary. Okay. Generally, I don't need to play to a drum track though. That'd be kind of karaoke-ish, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I have a full MIDI studio and I'm very comfortable with all kinds of different keyboard-esque stuff. So, okay. yeah. And when you were growing up, like, what, what kind of music did you enjoy listening to? Like, what do you think, what particular bands or singers or artists had, like, a more of an influence on you as a musician? Uh, I, I was kind of a, a song guy. I, I really like songs. I wasn't, I wasn't one of these kids that, that kind of glued on to a particular band, like ACDC or Van Halen or something, and that's all they listened to. I, I really... I really wasn't a fan of anyone in particular. I just found songwriting really cool. I wanted to be a songwriter early on. Mm. And, uh, and basically I wanted to be a songwriter because I was singing and I was tired of singing other people's songs and felt like I, I could express more of myself if I were singing from my own, you know? So I kind of identified with the great songwriters, you know, everyone from Billy Joel, Elton John, Paul I was Simon, just say Billy Joel. You know, yeah. yeah. All those kind of guys. It wasn't from a, piano perspective it was from songwriting you know uh the eagles yes uh, any thing. great yeah. record super tramp the knack yep. uh anything that just was like wow these are great songs i got to learn this song i got to check this out and, and and you know sometimes i would i would only have one album from them because it was a couple songs i wanted to learn yeah or whatever. yeah in the yeah. old days yeah. like yeah. you you didn't you couldn't buy like the individual song that came later in the late eighties where you could just buy like cassette singles. Right. Right. You buy the whole record. You could download I, know, I, songs. I got, I got a cool vinyl collection nowadays from those days. Uh, yeah. but yeah, that's how I discovered, you know, stuff. And the radio back then was, was a real special place. You know, you had yeah. your favorite radio stations and, and that would introduce you to a lot of music, you know? Yeah. You know what I used to do? I used to do, uh, I think it was on Sundays. I used to get up like around nine, ten o'clock. I don't know about your area, but uh, they would have like the countdowns. You know, Casey Casey. Oh yeah, had, yeah. Like, a well, countdown. Of course. Of well, he was national. Hits. Yeah. Yeah. So I would just record the songs right off the radio to the cassettes, and and then yeah, I would do yeah. Make would your do. own make your own mixtapes right off the radio, and you yes, try to yes. remember you would sit there and you try to try to cut out the commercials or the DJ yes, talking. Yes. Yeah. I actually just like last year. I think like when the COVID lockdown first hit, I, I'm like, I got nothing else to do. Let me just like clean up the basement. I actually threw out like tons of cassettes like, yeah, that I, I had from, from when I was a kid making making those recordings. Yeah, yeah. Because that, I mean, no one's got a cassette player anymore. Everything's like all MP3s. You know, yeah. it's funny. I I, I have a, a million cassettes of. I used to have a I used to have a Prophet Five keyboard, which I wish I still had. Um, but anyway, I used to record different tracks onto cassettes to while I was writing songs. I would I would pick out a part and record and then write another part and another, you know. And I got all these cassettes that are uh like just junk basically. It's just full of me noodling around on trying to write songs, but my my cassette deck broke probably about a year and a half ago and I was like, I'm not going to get this fixed or buy another one. Yeah. You know? So I got, I got like you, I probably have, or you 
used to have tons yeah. of cassettes laying around. Oh yeah. I had a whole like closet full. Yeah. Now when it comes to, um, you know, writing and composing music, I, I always find this interesting. So what, what's the process? Do you usually like write the lyrics and then you put the music first or yeah. first? I, I hear different things from different. Yeah. I, I, I think that it, for me, uh, there really is no set way. Um, I, I, pre I prefer to have a lyric to write music to. Okay. So like when I collaborate with people, I, I tend to try to collaborate with people that are more lyricists. Uh, okay. I do write lyrics, but when I write a lyric, it's um, uh, sometimes it's with the, with the piano. I'll sit down and, and come up with a melody and then see what fits with that. So sometimes it's an idea and, and just a, a title and that that'll spark an idea to write something musically. Um, but, you know, I do a lot of uh, soundtrack stuff and, and things like that. So music is music is also like lyrics to me. You know, it, it, yeah. it has it has a it has sort of its own language, too. So it can come from either way. So I don't really have a set way. Generally, I, I usually start with an instrument. OK, you know, that's interesting. Now, I think I, I read like on on your web page, like when you were fifteen, you were, you were on the Murph Griffin show, right? <laughs> yeah, who's Murph Griffin? I, I, I'm dating yeah. myself because I actually <laughs> yeah. remember, remember. I remember the Murph Griffin show. Like that was yeah. like the uh, Jay Leno show, or it was it was the Johnny the Carson counterpart counter. You know, it was like that was the competition it was johnny carson the the tonight show he had merv griffin mike douglas god i'm now i'm showing my age anyway uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah i was now, on that show yeah yeah was that like on. your first big show or did you do shows before that or <clears throat> i had been performing in front of audiences live since i was probably 12 years old so it you wasn't really nervous or anything like that well, yeah, we all get nervous, but not not nervous to the the point where it was uh, debilitating or anything like that. No, yeah. um, good nervous, you know, the kind you can turn that energy into something useful. Uh, but this was the first time I was on uh, on any kind of TV show. Yeah. Okay. And now, did that uh, was, help propel your your future career, or uh, it depends on how you look at that. Um, it didn't really help me musically much. But it did get me an agent, and that's that's how I what led me to doing some acting gigs. Um, yes, which we're going to get to right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> because when I when I heard about you, and I and I, I I found out that you were on the the Karate the Karate Kid movie, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it, it was funny because when I found out about you, I was just getting into the Cobra Kai television series on netflix i mean it's been out right. for a while yeah a couple and, years and three years my, now. Uh, kids have been watching it and we enjoy it a lot and then cool. i found out that or uh, man you know i wanted you know a musician like you know like yourself on, to be interviewing on my on my channel here and, yeah and that was just a plus i'm like oh my god man he's also <laughs> a little bit on, on the karate kid now, you get you a, have a small part on that show or on in that movie? On, well, Karate Kid, Karate Kid was a very interesting uh, job. Uh, there were uh, a lot of us, I would say five of us. There were five other guys that were not part of the Cobra Kai group. Okay. Uh, and we were supposed to. Hey, there he is. <laughs> That's he, my buddy, Hero. <laughs> nice. Uh, so uh, there were a group of guys that were not studying karate and not in a dojo and we were f supposed to be f his friends uh so there were a lot more parts available and a lot more dialogue than actually ended up in the movie uh so i worked on it for the full time i mean they uh i remember uh most of the last part of that year in 83 was for six about five six months i was off and on with them uh, uh toward the end it got pretty obvious that they weren't going to be using us as much and so i was being paid to stay home really <laughs> which you don't want to you know you know 18 year old kid wants to work man that was that was tough i mean, it was under contract i couldn't even get another gig wow yeah it was columbia now, were you playing a character that was associated with ralph or the character johnny or no we were friends with ralph ralph's character oh, okay Dan, you know okay. Daniel Larusso. So you know, do you remember? Uh, I don't know how 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 uh, um, 
familiar you are familiar you are with Karate Kid, but uh, Freddie, do you remember that character, Freddie? He was one of us. He was the kid that lived in the apartment with Daniel LaRusso. Okay. And and uh, he met he met Daniel at that apartment and then introduced his friends to him at the beach and that that first beach kicking ass oh party. when he met the oh yeah when he first <laughs> so met the first the ass kicking party Kai. yeah yeah right yeah and I've been so to rewatch rewatch that movie with the yeah. kids i'm like oh yeah this was this was from a based on a movie from the 80s and my kids are like anything anything yeah. from the 80s they don't like they don't want to like hear it they're like oh man you're old really and, that's and, how old are your kids they must be really. Oh, uh, I, I got I got four 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 daughters. They range from ten all the way up to sixteen. So, yeah, they're kind of young. So maybe if they were a little older, they'd be more interested in the eighties. But I, yeah, it's probably for them very ancient. I'm yeah. sure. But they're into the movie. They're into. Yeah. In, <laughs> Just pick it up and play it. You might as well pick it up and play it now. Yeah, they're they're into the television show. So I think if now that they've seen the television show, yeah. Yeah, the, it's the, it's yeah, sort it's, of a it's a continuation of what happened 30 years later after they yeah. grew up. Yeah, basically. So it's kind of a cool premise. Uh, some of the guys that I uh, I know a lot of the people, anyone from Karate Kid, the original movie, I, you know, I know them and they they're some of them have made cameos, which is nice. Yeah. Um, my part was probably too small for anyone to care about. I mean, in terms of what my actual, you know, who was that guy? Oh, he was that one. And, you know, no one's going to really remember I didn't have a big part in the mm. end. I had a much bigger part going in, and yeah. a lot smaller part going out. So, but it, you but got you a know, few was, more acting gigs after that. Well, before that, I had a, I was in a feature film I starred in, uh, which you know, we could we could move on now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was I mean, another you got, thing. You got, the, you got the taste of it. You got the taste yeah. of the Hollywood scene. Yeah, it was a movie and then, called. And then speaking Hot of Moves. the eighties. Yeah. Um, you're currently the keyboardist for the band Survivor, right? Which yeah, yeah. If anybody watching this remembers Rocky, that that was like Rocky, another thing for me. I'm like Rocky Karate three Kid, musician, and he plays with Survivor with one of right. probably the most iconic movies of all time. Amazing, yeah. Uh, Rocky three and Rocky four. Yeah, Survivor had uh, the lead, uh, you know, I the Tiger, and then yes. Burning Heart for Rocky yeah. four, and then. They also had the theme song for Karate Kid, Moment of Truth. Uh, so, so it was like, what? That is the weirdest thing. I'm, I'm actually in the video for the original song, The Moment of Truth, for the movie of Karate Kid when they used it for the promotion. They had uh, you know, shots from the movie in, the, in their video, and I'm in it. And uh, 30 years later, I'm actually in that band. So <laughs> it's yeah. kind of weird I how that worked out yeah so how's that how's it going for you now like i mean as i i figured like in the old days musicians once you got the recording contract you sold records there were multiple ways of making money right like yeah. you sold albums. yeah albums now yeah. it's a little bit harder right because i don't think people really no nobody buy, buys, re buy buys records, records. <laughs> albums, right it's records here's the here's the the bad news records are basically uh um, promotional pieces for you selling tickets to a show. So now that's really make, what they are. So now musicians like yourself to make yeah. a living, you got to actually work harder than, than in. Pretty well, I mean, right? I don't know if you work harder, you just work differently. We always worked hard. It was not never yeah. been an easy business. You know, there's always competition. There's always, it's always difficult, but uh, with that said, what it's done is it's cut off a lot of revenue streams that otherwise might be easier to get. Mm. We can't play. I mean, we can't play and sell tickets anywhere unless it's online. So, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, it, as far as um, concerts go, it's, it's, uh, it's created a very bad, um, not good for anyone's pocketbook. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. I mean, I, I'm not trying to sugarcoat it, obviously. Yeah. It's, it's uh, the, the music industry is big question mark. What is it now? You know, I yeah. mean, if we don't get, if, if people don't start playing and going to concerts in the next seven, eight months, I mean, we're talking two years, you know, yeah. it's, I don't know what I we're going to. It was hard even before COVID, right? Because 
People don't really Maybe. buy music. They listen to YouTube. They listen to Spotify, Pandora, well, it, whatever. It was, it was hard in terms of uh, it, it just shifted. You know, you still had streaming income. You still, you still had uh, licensing income. That's, that hasn't changed. But performing is where the money actually got better. You know, because you because uh, un unless you were a big act in the 80s, like Survivor was perhaps, and they had a, a big hit on the on the charts, you'd be making big money performing. But it kind of shifted as time went on. People were willing to pay uh, to see bands from the past and new bands. And so the the the, the touring industry is a multi billion dollar industry, which mm -hmm. is completely shut down. Imagine just shutting down airlines or just shutting down. Well, they almost did. Imagine shutting down the entire entertainment industry, which is almost what happened. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's nuts. I mean, I don't know how, where this is going to end up, but it's, everyone was hoping the new year would be some kind of magical change, but it just seems more of the same right now. Yeah. To me. So considering that with this all going on now, I mean, do you got, do you and Survivor have any like tour dates now or? No. Nothing, nope. huh? Nobody I know does. I mean, let's put it this way. I know people, and I'm in other bands too. So okay. Survivor's not the only band I, I play with. They're only famous band I play with. Um, but everybody gets these gigs, and then as the gig dates approach, they fizzle away. Or they, get, or they get pushed to the next month. And then the next month approaches, and they get pushed to the next month. So right now, it's like someone will call me and say, hey, we got a gig. And I'll just kind of pencil it in and go, yeah, whatever. You know, I mean, it, it, you can't count on it right now. Now, as far as Survivor goes and bands of that stature, it's not so simple because you've got a crew, you know, you've got, um, you know, sound people and you've got a whole structure, infrastructure to, to take care of. And not everybody lives in the same place. So now you have to normally you'd have to, you know, give everybody a plane ticket. They all meet a certain place and we rehearse and then we have an itinerary. How do you do that with COVID right now? I mean, it, yeah. it, it, so it's even harder for the, like the more, the, the bigger, more established acts have it even harder. Whereas uh, local, local cover bands and tribute bands, they just show up and play if, if a place is open, like in a parking lot or something, you know, yeah. where you can't do that. Survivor in a parking lot somewhere? That's not going to yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. I saw, um, what was it? Uh, Hall & Oates advertising for a gig at uh, Fantasy Springs, some offshoot casino in Palm Springs in November. Wow. I don't know if that's going to happen. I mean, for them, you know, I mean, I don't, I, but people are trying to keep people interested by saying, hey, we, we're going to, we got a gig coming up. It, it's yeah. in five years, but it's coming up. So I don't know. Well, hopefully, hopefully it all works out. So I, I see you got your your keyboard and everything there. Um, you That's got always anything here. that you want to you can play for us. Uh, I could play uh, one of my old songs. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, I got this old bluesy piece I used to I used to do with a band of mine. Now let's see. It. All right. Can you hear that? Yeah, I hear it. Does anybody know her name? I wonder where she lives Cause I've been searching almost all my life I still don't know where she is Another sun in the western sky Has fallen at my feet I must be crazy cause I still believe Tomorrow might be the day Time takes its time When you wait for something new Time takes its time It's something that you need Time takes its time
takes its time Oh, I've waited too long So many faces come and gone All memories through the years I must be crazy but I still go on Tomorrow might be the day Time takes its time When you wait for something new Time takes its time It's something that you need Time takes its time Whoa, I've waited too long takes its time when you wait for something new time takes its time it's something that you need time takes its time Whoa, I've waited too long that's great man very great very very uh soulful there yeah it's an old song i i uh i used to have a band uh the jeffrey bryan band believe it or not and i used to uh we just had all kinds of tunes and uh that's one of, that's just an old bluesy tune i just thought it was kind of appropriate kind of yeah you know kind of bored <laughs> <laughs> you know, with, now do you with, yeah, I mean that's like a kind of like a big part. Do you do do you play a lot of blues music in general, or is it just like I, whatever no, fits I'm, the mood or I'm whatever not really the band a, calls for? I I wouldn't classify myself as a blues player because there's guys that do that a lot better than I do. But I I have a lot of blues influence in my playing and soulfulness, and uh, you know I just love that you know you know I like that that whole kind of bluesy vibe. So I I'm, I'm more of a blues rock player um so yeah some sometimes it's the blues sometimes it's not you know oh man i just like good songs whatever they are now do you like do you like today's music at all or it depends on what today's music is i mean there's some guys that are and and people that are writing really good stuff and some of it's just the same old shit you know rehash <laughs> you know, <clears throat> you know like... i mean I, yeah <laughs> what yeah, you know, I mean, it, you know, without getting too too uh, unpolitically correct here, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to sound like the old guy, get off my lawn guy. But, yes, you know, <laughs> but a lot. I, I'm not crazy about some of the hip hop stuff these days because it's just a bunch of beats with someone, yeah. you know, playing. Not really, not really focusing on musicianship as much as they used to. Yeah, yeah, that that, that I think I, I find it like uh, strange. In, in a way, right? Because I, I yeah. took my um, took I took my daughter to a Ariana concert. And I've taken her them to the Jonas Brothers concert. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, there's some hits, you know, that that they got that I like. Whatever, you know, some of their big hits. But when you look at the stage, like I went like the Ariana concert. They, the 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 drum they have the drummer drop them in. There's always a drummer, you know, or whatever. The guy's doing the work. And the bassist, the, she had like one bassist, then occasionally play guitar. But dude, he looks so bored. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, of it's, a, a and, lot of it's tracks, you know. 
and, right. and it's like, and then you go, and if you go on on a YouTube and you watch something like concert footage, which is like Eric Clapton and, you know, or, you know, he's got like a full entourage, keyboards, the drummers, a bassist, a guitarist, you know, and sometimes you even got like some trumpet people playing on there. I right, mean, it's, right. it, it ha- and it's changed so much. It's a know? different, it's a different, um, uh, what, what is important now? To, to a lot of, uh, let's say, the younger generation is is not wrong or right. It's just the shift, the emphasis has shifted. Um, there was a time, and I can tell you why, in my opinion. Okay. I think, I think back in the 20 years ago, 30 years ago, maybe even 15, you know, the, you, if you wanted to record something, you had to know how to play fairly well because you couldn't do it at home. Mm -hmm. If you wanted a professional recording, you had to go somewhere and do it. And it was cost, it cost money and there was time. And so that investment wasn't exactly, uh, um, uh, you know, something you had to really kind of spend some time and get your shit together, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And so nowadays, you know, with the proliferation of computers and people knowing how to record at home, you know, the shift has changed from learning how to learn your instrument to I'll fix it in the mix. I can fix, I can just, you know, quantize this. I can fix that. And the musicianship aspect of it is less important. Mm, That's what I think. And and there was a time, there was a time when, you know, it was important to learn how to play guitar. I mean, Eddie Van Halen, you know, uh, inspired millions of people to pick up a guitar. Yeah. And, and uh, I got to say, I, who's inspiring people to do that now? That are younger. It's not. It's like John, coming, John Mayer. I mean, maybe you know. Yeah. If, if you know, if, but do the kids of this generation even know? Right. That's what I'm you saying. Know who he is? I mean, you know? and and his influences are all the people that you yours are. You know, because yeah. you know he learned from Stevie Ray Vaughan and 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 you, you know, Buddy yeah. Guy and all those guys. But yeah, but I mean, the point. The it's point just, is, is I the, the point is is I just don't think that people are having the same. I'm not saying that that. Here's another thing with, with the, with the uh, proliferation of the internet and YouTube and all these places where you can just kind of put something online. Now there's a, there's less, uh, there's a lot more people being creators and a lot less musicians. I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm not saying that that's not entertaining for people. It's just things have shifted. It's not like it used to be. It's not like you, you had to learn a craft and then go out there and try to use that craft to express what it is that you're trying to, you know, trying to, trying to communicate nowadays. It's just, let's just create shit. It's just, we can do it. I mean, go out there and listen to, you could listen to tons and tons and tons of records and come up with one or two that are really good. Most of it's garbage yeah. because everybody can do it. Now it used yeah. to be, used to be something that you have to practice and, you know, hone a skill, yeah. not just learn, yeah. not just learn how to turn on a computer. Yeah. Or get mean, off my listen. lawn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you can tell, like, the guitar here, I'm like, a, I was, like, uh, big into, like, Eddie's, like, hair, hair metal days. And, oh, right. You know, like, you know, but when you listen to it now, I mean, they had, those guys had, like, really good skill, skills, oh, like, musicianship yeah. wise you know. And that, you know, Eddie Van Halen, George Lynch. They made it look easy. <clears throat> yeah, they did. But and we took it know. for granted. We take it yeah, for granted. Yeah, we did. You know, because now people are like, well, shit, I can do that. I, I, I played Guitar Hero for 20 days, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot what, harder than it looks. <laughs> what, is, what is that? You know, I mean, these guys, they grew up, you know, with a guitar in their hand from the time they could speak. And and just, you know, that's what they did. It, it, it's where they put their energy. Nowadays, yeah. people are so damn distracted with so many things. And I don't even know if it's a distraction. It's just a different way to think about uh, creation, creating yeah you know, creating music, the creation of music. It's a different approach. So Mm -hmm. I can't really sit here and say, well, that's no good because I'm sure people in the twenties thought, well, we know that people in the forties and fifties thought rock and roll was, yeah, come on, just a stupid fad, you know, and they probably thought that they weren't serious musicians, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping one day there'll be like another, like big push, like well, another, like, you know, like another Beatles group or some yeah. major shift. I think, music I think scene and, ho- and hopefully if it's a group or an individual, you know, they're it, really skilled musicians. Yeah. 
it's possible that um, COVID could be that trigger because yeah. a lot of people are home. They've got more time on their hands than they expect to. And maybe it's time to pick up that guitar. Maybe it's time to figure out how to play that piano. Yeah. You know, and maybe, maybe we'll get some better players out of it, better songs instead of just, you know, throwing on a track that AI wrote and uh, <laughs> singing over it, you know? Yeah. You know, now do you have any, like, like for yourself, like, you know, to help yourself out financially, whatever, do you record any albums or try to sell it through Spotify? I, I don't even know how that works, but yeah, well, like that unless, uh, unless you have an enormous following, there's almost no money to be made on those platforms. It's, it's, mm. what do they pay? Like one sixteenth of a, one thousandth know. of a penny or something per play, something stupid. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, I do have an album or songs that I've released on Spotify. And, and in fact, last year I was really, I thought, you know, since I'm stuck, uh, I'm going to do what a lot of my musician friends have done is I'm going to sit down and finish songs that I wanted to finish and record them and release them. And I made like 40 videos of me just singing stuff, some of my favorite songs. And yeah, I did that for a while. I got, I got sick of it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a little hard because I'm a performer. I like to be in yeah. front of people. So I did a show a few weeks ago with another band that I work with uh, out of the Canyon Club. It's a okay. big venue, big, big venue over here in LA. And um, it was a streaming show. And mm -hmm. I, it's the first full live, live streaming show that I had done. And uh, with a band that is. And that was just freaking weird, man. I mean, you'd play a song, really powerful piece of music, and then it would stop mm. and it would be dead silence. I mean, even the crickets weren't there. I mean, it yeah. was really quiet and it, you have it, it, you know, people were tuned in, I suppose, but it wasn't the same. The thing about performing, it's a conversation. Mm. You know, I get in front of people. I have something to say. I wait for their response. It's their turn to talk it's a conversation back and forth. And that energy is different on a different night, on a different yeah. time. Uh, and you don't get that. And that's why I don't think you're seeing this huge, uh, you know, this rush to do all these uh, streaming shows. They're not really picking on, ha catching on as much because yeah. they're not very interesting. Yeah. And, and it, my... it's funny that you say that because I, I have a friend, his name's Adam Nutter. He's a comedian. And he says the same thing. He's got comedians, mm. fellow comedians that do it's that. Got to be hard for comedians. Thing, but he's like, I'm not doing that. It's garbage. Can you imagine. You imagine. You need to feed off people. You need to have that energy, and you that's don't. That's half get the that. joke. Half the joke is how they respond. Yeah. Because then you can alter the joke and modify it for your audience. Can you imagine being a comedian and uh, going for a punchline, and it's just empty air after that? That sounds yeah. like a bomb for a comedian and even though yeah. they're not bombing perhaps maybe someone's laughing you know in oklahoma somewhere but yeah. it's got to be so difficult i was watching uh colbert um you know and he does his or even bill maher you know when he does his uh open monologue and they they went for it they just do their monologue and they don't care that there's no audience and it's really strange mm. to watch because they'll say a joke and they'll move on to the next joke it's it's like it's freaking weird man yeah i mean music, like this this is a little different you know like well we're one-on-one -on -one one-on-one -on -one, you know and it's pretty we're having the conversation but yeah it's just and it's, it's pretty, not the same it's pretty uh awesome. right the latency is not too bad and we can have a real conversation but without an audience response you're you're missing half of the the whole point you know yeah i don't think that i don't think we as humans or a society were that prepared or really had any idea what it was like to be socially distanced from each other until now. Yeah. I mean, or at least in, at least on our lifetimes, excuse me. Um, because, yeah. because I am the, the social interaction is what makes life worthwhile. Yeah. The isolation is what makes life worse. <laughs> yes. You yes. know, so it's like shit. I don't know. This has got to. That's when I say this has got to stop. I mean, yeah, we got to find another way to get through all this stuff because yeah. you know. it may be a, it may be a dangerous uh, pathogen, but at the same time, you know, being socially removed is also dangerous too. Yeah, 
Yeah, I just feel bad. I mean, it depends. Like everybody's different. Like me and my family, we're like really strict with the lockdown. I know some people. Sure. They 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 haven't stopped. You know, they're still going to the gym. They're still doing their martial arts or going out to bars. Um, I, I guess you. It all comes down to what you feel comfortable doing. You know. Exactly. Yeah. But I think it's eventually whether they came out with the vaccine or not. I think eventually people are just gonna like say screw it and just go back to normal or try to anyway well i I think so i mean my wife and i you know we've been pretty we take it seriously but you know we're also we consider ourselves to be reasonable you know i mean i'm not gonna just lock myself in a room for the for the duration of wherever this is you know there's there's precautions you can take wear your mask don't you know, don't lick doorknobs. That'd be a good idea. <laughs> I mean, be reasonable, you know? I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I took a trip with her last year to uh, New Hampshire for the fall, um, which was a little uncomfortable. I was afraid to do it, but we did it. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't go and hang out with crowds. We, we, we would stay at her hotel and order food, bring it in, and then we'd go and do whatever we wanted to see. And and the only thing that was a little nerve wracking was the flight because I didn't yeah. know what kind of wackos I was going to, uh, you know, encounter, whether or not they were going to be other people that were going to be responsible. It turns out it was pretty, pretty, pretty good. I mean, people yeah. were following the rules and being cool. And uh, it was a non-eventful trip. And I came back, I did not get sick and I'm fine. But I was also taking precautions. I didn't put myself in unnecessarily, no, you, you know, uh, in unnecessary risky situations either. Yeah. So I don't know. It's it's there's a threshold. I suppose if I had kids or I was living with a, a, a parent that was uh, ill, um, maybe not. Maybe I would take it even more. Maybe you know, clamp it down even more. But it's just her and I. Yeah. And so uh, we felt we could risk that, but you know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, man. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> You're here, and, and you know, we're ha- it was great having you on the show. And Thanks, uh, man. yeah, man, I'm, I'm just hoping you know that one day, once this is all over, I get to see you. Yeah, perform that- with Survivor or whatever. Oh, yeah, or have you back on the show? And, we're in that part uh, of the country all the time. Yeah, man. Oh, you are. Yeah, the last time I was in New York, it's not we we played uh, in Seneca Falls, uh, up okay. north. So I mean, it's a couple hours from you, but um, yeah. And then we had another gig somewhere in, in Connecticut, and we play that that whole strip a lot. So oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, man. So hopefully we get the the meet up. Maybe who knows? Maybe you can teach me something on the keyboard. I play a little bit, not as good nice. as you. Nice, man. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah How I've long you play guitar? Uh, on and off for about eight years, but I would say since COVID hit, a lot more. So, so, so the last twelve months you've been playing for eight years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like trying, trying to cr- trying to improve my chops, so to speak. Every, yeah. Everybody's got all this time to cram all that yeah. in now. You know, keyboard I've been doing probably like for probably two and a half years. Oh, like. Cool. Uh, yeah, long story short, uh, I got injured uh, too much jujitsu, too much Brazilian jujitsu, and I hurt my foot, so I had to take time off. So I used, I'm like, I got the keyboard, might as well take keyboard lessons. And yeah. COVID hit, and now I'm like, oh shit, man, I don't want to. You can't to stop. I can't go to jujitsu anymore. Yeah. So that's it the guitar and the keyboard and kids and, wow. and you saw a hero so you- over there. Are you uh are you are you trying to record anything? Are you just playing for fun? Or are you uh, playing nah, with other I, I just play for fun. Try to try to uh, get good as uh, as I could possibly be. I'm, I I don't have I I don't have any um, aspirations of uh, being like you know a recording artist. I just like I just love it. I just like playing yeah. for fun. And if I can get you know to learn learn songs and get them to the way they the way they they sound is good to me you know on a right. recording, that's good enough yeah that's, but that's, i i find that you know music is is good you know keeps the brain sharp it's enjoyable 
And I'm just not the type of person that likes to waste my time. I like to do things productively, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah my down cool. days, you know, where I watch TV, but I got to be productive, man. Sometimes, sometimes you have, music. sometimes it's that, uh, that downtime when you're not focusing on something that re-energizes that creative juice, you know? Yeah. So it's like, just let me turn everything off and go over here and watch some TV or do something else. And then you come back to it and you're like, holy shit, I got it now. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's weird how the brain does yeah. it. But it's yeah. all good, man. And I, I got a great appreciation for musicians like yourself. And Thank I, you. find, well, thanks I, find, for I find it inspiring that to meet someone like yourself, that's still willing to perform and show the musician on strings off and, I'm just hoping like the new kids generations, like, you know, like I said, it reverts back to the way it yeah. was. Are any of your kids uh, musically interested? Uh, they, they have done instruments like clarinet and trumpet and stuff, but I don't know if it was the teachers or whatever, but then it just kind of like died off. I don't like, come on guys. Let's let's form a band. I don't know if you watch YouTube often, but there's this family. There, it got <laughs> to the point that they got so many views that yeah, they're yeah. Uh, being shown on TV on talk shows. Talked about. Oh my god! Shows. Um, I can't. If I, I, if I find a link, I send it to you. But it's they call it the quarantine family. I don't oh know what god. their name is, but uh, they get millions and millions of views, and the whole family the kids the boys are probably i'm guessing between five and nine what one, one plays drums the other one he plays guitar bass uh and keyboard and the father always plays guitar and his daughter plays back as sings as a backup uh singer so there's four of them uh, right cool, yeah cool. father daughters yeah two sons and they're wow. good they do everything rolling stones yeah. Beatles, no shit David. wow wow I got to check that out. Yeah, I'll send so you the many, link. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, man, it was great having you on the show. And then uh, hopefully we get to see you back. And, and good luck, man. Good luck. Hopefully, you know, the shit's over and you can go back to performing, and, you know. Yeah. And, oh, my God. Support yourself. You know, it, it's, ain't that the truth? I mean, the thing is, is it's not a question of whether uh, you mentioned a second ago, you know, that you as a musician, you're you're still willing to perform and blah 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 but the truth is is it's not something i can separate myself from at this point you yeah. know i mean it's kind of my it's kind of in my dna it's what i do it's who i am and uh i'm not just gonna not be able to do it it, it sucks that it's the way it is right now i can't imagine it's never gonna come back it's just gonna be different yeah so i'm hoping it's sooner than later man because it's really tough yeah on us on musicians especially yeah I hear you. All right, but man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, man. Take care.